Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Come On CFL. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. This is part of the Come On Now, the podcast team. I have Nick Taylor, former three-time Grey Cup champion. Before we jump in, of course, this is our partnership with Bet99. So please be sure to subscribe on Bet99 using our code COMEON99, all capital letters. Please bet responsibly. You get up to a $1,500 uh, first recap something. It's on the link, man. Forget about it. I, it's too much to talk about. But, yeah, come on 99 capital letters. Be sure to subscribe and please bet responsibly. Let's jump right in, Nick. Nick is a former three-time Grey Cup champion. He's played for Winnipeg. He played for Calgary. Who was the first team you played for? I forgot. Technically, Jeez. technically, yeah. I was on Saskatchewan team in 2015 for the last three weeks of the season. Mm-hmm. And uh, the last two oh. weeks of the season, I didn't play in the game, though, so I don't really count that per se. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we'll uh, find out Ottawa, more about we'll, I was we'll in find Ottawa, out. Okay. Edmonton. Oh, yeah, that's right. Edmonton. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Grandma, Edmonton. Whole Alberta. I rocked with Alberta for a while. Yeah, so um, you're like Pat Beverly, just traveling the whole country. Um... I'm, hey, but in the CFL, the way free agency works, you t- you usually link with probably about four or five teams in your career. If you have a, if you play in the CFL long enough, you will be with multiple teams for the most part. There's a couple uh-huh. players that stay with their team for most of their career. Maybe uh-huh. one or two, a couple, few people. You know, they play with two teams, but for the most part, you're going to be on three, four, or five teams. Just how the free agency works and mm-hmm. how the league just transitions with players. All right. So let's jump in. Nick, last week we had, you know, our, the matchups between uh, – shoot, do I, is this the right list? I don't even know. Tell Toronto. us about the match. Tell us about the matchups from last week. So it was four games last week. Um, we started off the week early with Toronto going into Montreal 2-2. Two and two um for the season and they end up victorious they come out that game 37 18. um cody fajardo gets hurt after the first quarter but they didn't do much in the first quarter with him at that point but um that was still a big injury for them because their backup come in and immediately immediately freeman comes in and throws a uh he throws an interception um for a pick six to wilton mcmanus um and he just had a hell of a game that game, but let off with that that interception for a touchdown. And Toronto wins that game 37-18. But the big biggest part of that game was Janarian Grant, man. The biggest, probably the biggest free agent that Winnipeg lost in the offseason. If you really look at it, what's going on this year. I mean, you could count Yoshi Hardaway, you could count Jackson Jeff Cope. Um, but Janarian Grant, man, the best punt returner, kick returner, special teams guy in the game. You could tell me about leaks. You could tell me about uh, uh, my guy Deadman in Ottawa, but Janarian Grant is a game changer, field changing specimen, man. He changed the field position of that game the whole game. And one thing that's different between the CFL and the NFL, you can't kick away from these guys because you're gonna get a penalty. So you have to kick the ball in field, or you're gonna lose hella field position. So, and the returners have to return it. That's the difference between this game. And the NFL, that's what makes this game so special because special teams count. And Janarian Grant had a big kick return for for a touchdown. He also had um, another kick return for 40 yards. And then he had five punt returns for 20 yards. Now, think of how he's flipping the field for Toronto offense. Their young quarterback has a hard time, you know, the last couple weeks of of continuing drives and not turning the ball over. And Janarian Grant was just a big freaking factor, Um, one of the biggest – off-season acquisitions. He signed it like the last couple of weeks before the season started. I don't know why. I don't know what was going on, but that was a big addition to their team. He's making plays for them, and they come out victorious. Cody Fajardo looked like he pulled up on his hamstring, and then the backup just would um just wasn't able to get the job done. So they lose in a blowout. Rudy, you're on. You're on. You're on mute, Rudy. What about the next game? Jump right in. Next All right, game. the next. Okay, you just want me to. I'll just dive into just each jump one. Jump in. Dive in each game. Man, in a game where everybody knows Calgary at Winnipeg. Winnipeg won their first game last week, the week before last against Ottawa. Calgary blew their last game against the defending champs, Montreal. 
and it's set up for a big time game between these two teams. One thing that everybody knows about Winnipeg and Calgary that this game is don't matter what the hell the records say it is, it's coming down to the end of the freaking game. And this game, just like every other time that it does, it comes down to the end of the game. Um, and Winnipeg pulls it out 40, 41 to 37. They scored 78 points in this game. Winnipeg came into the game um, first or second in points allowed per game, but after this game, they rise up a little bit. But um, it was just a hell of it was a fun game. The last two minutes of the first half, Rudy, uh, Dietrich, Mil- Dietrich Nichols gets a pick six for Winnipeg. On the second and inches, Jake Myers scrambles. Yeah, instead of them running the ball, they think they could take a shot. Um, you know, it's a free play, really, on second and inches, because you know on third and inches, you could just quarterback sneak. Dietrich, I mean, Jake Myers throws a late out route to his receiver, and Dietrich Nichols jumps in front of it for his first interception in a couple of years and takes it to the house. He, he acted like this was his first pick in a couple of years because nobody caught him. He was gone. He, he was running like the dog was chasing him. It was it was good for him. It was a good momentum change for Winnipeg, and that changed to flip the game around. But then Winnipeg goes up right before the half, and, and Calgary on the next drive, their first play, they fumble the ball, and the running back picks it up and scampers for 55 yards when it looked like a broken play. Calgary comes back the next play. They throw a bomb against the, 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 the young DB in Winnipeg, score the ball. They get another stop before um, – um, a two and out, they score again, a field goal, a tie game going to halftime, 23-23. Winnipeg comes back after halftime, score 30-23. Calgary is a big possession. It's second, it's third and three on their 37. Dave Dickinson decides to go for it. The, the, the announcers are like, oh, of course they're about to, you know, it's third and three. What you think they're going to do? They're just going to try to get the team off sides, try to get a free one. If they don't jump off sides, you go back five yards in front Dave Dickinson, I guess his name Dickinson for a reason because he had a hell of balls. He go for it on third and three, and and they get it, and that changed the game, changed momentum, and now it's a seesaw battle. Calgary goes down to score. Winnipeg comes back. They kick a field goal. Calgary comes back and score. Winnipeg comes back and score another touchdown. They have the rookie receiver from Florida State, Ontario, Pokey Wilson. He goes. He he replaces Kenny Lawler, who's been hurt for six weeks. Dalton Schoen, another top receiver, top ten receiver in the league, top ten player in the league. He's hurt, and Ontario Wilson goes for two hundred and ten yards off of thirteen catches. Big shout out to him. He balls. Winnipeg goes up forty-one thirty-seven, and this is what it comes down to. On that drive, when Winnipeg scores forty-one thirty-seven, they get a penalty. After Calgary kicks the score to touchdown, they get a penalty. So they're down at like a five yard line or something like that. They're backed up. On second and six, Winnipeg goes for it at like their 11 yard line. And controversial play happened. Brandon Dozier's on the 23 side. He's on the side where he's well, playing. Okay. The you said goes for it. Well, yeah, they're going to go for the second down. No, no, no. I was second and six. Well, they're, they're th- they, they have to get first down. They have to. It's, it's, okay. Five, six minutes left in the game. It's a big drive going on right now. Momentum swung to Calgary. They're up three. And, you know, if they don't get it right now, they punt the ball, and Calgary has the ball at the 50-yard line. All they have to do is they're basically in field goal range. The ref call a pass. The ref doesn't call a pass interference on Brandon Dozier. Uh, Walatarski. He runs into Dozier. He puts his foot, stumps on Dozier's foot, and then he pushes him off, and then he breaks on the out route. He kind of slips, so it's like accidental contact on the feet. But it's because Walatarski steps on Dozier's feet. It goes to the command center because they challenge it, and they reward Winnipeg with a big first down. And then Winnipeg take advantage. They go down and score a touchdown. They come back. They get a, a two and out. Calgary punts it. And they don't really get the ball back because, uh, oh, matter of fact, Winnipeg is playing a long game in this one because they are um, they lost to Calgary by three, but they only played each other twice this year. So if Winnipeg doesn't win by more than three, they don't get the tiebreaker in the series. So Winnipeg is up 39-37 after that. They, they use a head-to-head point differential for a tiebreaker in the CFL? Because they only played twice this year. For so if it came down to it at the end of the year – 
It goes to whoever won. You know that they don't use a point differential head to head. Yeah, head head to head. Okay. If it came down to it, so Coach O'Shea thinking the long game. He goes for two instead of going for the extra point to put him up three in the last three minutes of the game. They get the two, so they up four, so they own the tiebreaker. So a big thing that happened later on in the game, after they go up four, after that whole controversial pass interference that should never been called, um, Calgary doesn't get the first down. They punt it to Winnipeg, and Winnipeg needs the first down to get the game over with. So they throw the ball on second down rather than just running it out, you know, and punting it and letting their defense do their thing because they need to get the first down because they punt it, and Calgary comes down and get the field goal even though they lose the game. They win the series by points differential. So Winnipeg guts it out, throw a deep out, they get the first down, they win that game. And a thrilling damn game. It was a fun one to watch. Winnipeg pulls it out, they win to get the tiebreaker. Um, and the next game we have, what I thought was going to be the game of the week, was Saz versus BC. Man. Well, it was the performance of the week. The, was it the There were two of them in there. I mean, 400 <laughs> plus yards. It was a 470 yards and over passing and. 200 yards on offense plus, from BC. And 240 plus yards receiving by one receiver? I mean, that's. 240 yards by Justin McKinnis, Canadian receiver who I said has blossomed into being possibly the top, the best receiver in the league this year. And he's cramping in the whole second half. He cramped twice, Rudy. But he still was able to battle out, got some electrolytes, come back in the game. And, and, and Sash just cannot stop him. He's six five, long radius. So whenever he throws the ball, he just reaches up and grabs it in all hands, and the DB can't get through to him because he's just reaching out. But it's so long, DBs can't even get to him, and he just eats them a lot. But the game is close, Rudy, because Vernon Adams throws two interceptions, so they're up. BC's up um, ten points, and their Saz doesn't get a touchdown at the one yard line. Shea Patterson played a pretty good game, but he don't get a touchdown at the one-yard line. So BC is backed up, and Vernon Adams throws a pick back there. So let's keep Sass in the game. Sass get a touchdown. Sass got momentum. They do a, a onside kick to the kicker, Brett Maurer. He dribbles it and corrals the ball. They got the ball, momentum swinging. They're about to pull off an upset, and they get a penalty, blows the drive. It's second and 25, they throw it to one of their Canadian receivers. He's trying to make a play out of nothing. He fumbles. Vernon Adams takes away, takes apart the, the rest of the game. He takes in control of the game from that point on. Um, and he leaves no doubt. Every big throw he needed to make, he makes it. Um, every big catch McKinnis needed to make, he makes it. Their other top receiver, Hollins, should have had 180 yards. He dropped two big ones. But Vernon Adams was just downright tremendous. He Those were... 450, he runs for 39, he has a touchdown running. He's just tremendous right now. He's he's in a zone. He's throwing the ball through zones, throwing it through four players. It's just magnificent to watch, man. Even though he had those two turnovers, man, he still played a great game in my eyes. When they needed him in crucial moments, he made them. And that's what you want your big-time quarterback to do. Right now, he's the MOP, most outstanding player. He's playing terrific. Um, his growth of throwing the ball in the pocket, it's outstanding when he needs to scramble and 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 and, and prolong the the, the 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 throw. I mean, not prolong the throw, prolong the the play, extend the play. He's doing that. He's making getting his receivers open, like so, Dan, like Dan Marino, like Dan Marino. Yeah, that's the guy I was thinking of. Um, <laughs> so that was what we had right there. Um, so I'm gonna lead you into the last game. Oh yes, man. The Edmonton Elks against the Ottawa Red Blacks. I know uh, Ottawa won in a last-second field goal. Um, was that correct? Yes. And um, with that win, Edmonton started 0-5. And I presume as soon as he got to the locker room, uh, head coach Chris Jones got fired. Yes. So do you want to talk about the game, or do you want to talk about your feelings on Chris Jones' termination? Oh. Right. Your, your your favorite coach in uh, CFL history. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go to the game first, man. So Ottawa pulls this game out 37-34. Um, Drew Brown goes 26 for 38 after coming back from a concussion from last game against Winnipeg. He throws for 480 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, 12.6 average. They have over 530 yards on offense, Rudy. Who survives that game as a head coach? 
I mean, I, I would say a lot of Hurricanes coaches have survived. Okay, that this is the Hurricanes, and your team um, um, has I, a, I, your team is eight and thirty-three in your tenure. Well, how do you have a job that long? Because they paid them a lot of money to come there. They, you know, when they came there after the COVID year, they were bad. So he changes, he flips all the people out, he brings all the people in, and they continue to be bad. And he makes bad decision after bad decision as the head coach and as the leader. And they continue to be bad. But, you know, you're tied in with the coach. You give them a chance the first year. The second year, you say, okay, let's see if there's any improvements. They come back the third year, you're like, okay, how we ended the season last year, we should be better. We went and got a quarterback that you say is going to lead our team. We paid all these receivers on offense. We should be a good team. So he's 8-33, and 33, including the 0-5 start this season? Yes. Rudy. So he was 8-28, and 28 and he wasn't fired after last year. Because the first year they gave him, you know, you bringing in all your players, you know, you try to give your, your coach a little, you know, grace period to get the players that he wants in. And then the second year, you're like, okay, you should start seeing some turnaround. The next year, they start off 0-8, 0-9 again. <laughs> but you, you committed okay. this money to this guy because you, because he's a known winner in this league. Before he got there, he's like 57 and and. In 30, 53 and 37, he won a championship in Edmonton before he left the SAS. The SAS, they started off bad again that 2016 year. And the next couple of years, they're, they're in championship contention. So you think that that's what's going to happen again. Wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Chris Jones can't turn it around. And everything that could go wrong, uh, how to lose a game, they lose a game. This last game against Ottawa, Rudy, they make a tremendous comeback because there are – they only lose games by three points. They lost every game by three points, <laughs> and they lost one game by seven points. We're going to call them the Lakers against Denver of the CFL. Oh, stop it. You a close sweep. Lakers, that's what, stop that's what, it. That's what Edmonton has been no, losing. They're, like, they're losers. That's what they are. I just got, and I just got, and I just got a text message from someone I know saying he was he's so happy that Chris Jones is gone. Yeah, he's, and he's it wasn't not, you. He's not a fan favorite, Rudy. Nobody. He's, mm -hmm. His bravado, how he brings his energy, how he cuts players after a week of having them or not doing good, and he just rotates players in and out, in and out throughout the whole season. He, he never gives anybody any chance to to sustain and, 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 and become a better player or develop them. He's just, well, you're not getting a the job, then you're out of here in a week. Damn, Ru damn Rudy, this is football. Shit happens. So – you got to give – you got. first of all, are you developing your players? Are you teaching them the right way to play football? Because when I watch the Edmonton Elks on defense, where it's his calling card is a defensive coach, a defensive phenomenal mind, and your team is continuously year after year the worst damn defense in the league, Rudy, that's on you. That's what are you doing. You're the defense. I'm not coaching. So I'm saying it's on me. I'm not the coach. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you as 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 – as Chris Jones, it's on him. So you're was he ever a good defensive coach? You're not getting your players to understand your defense, or your defense is just stupid. And well, was he ever a good coach? He he was considered a good coach because he was a defensive mastermind for Toronto back in the days who won a championship. Um, then he goes to Edmonton and he leads a, a great defense to winning the championship there. And then he leaves and he goes to he goes to um, SAS and they have a good defense. But now that I think about it, he hasn't had a good defense since he had Willie Jefferson. On the D line, six 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 seven D lineman who def deflects balls at the D line, who gets six, um strip sacks and and, and changed the game. Was this his first uh, head coaching job? No, he was the head coach of oh. Edmonton when they were the Eskimos in 2014 and 15. He wins the okay. championship in 15. Uh -huh. He leaves there to go to be the head coach of Sass because they give him the GM obligations and all that stuff, and he goes there because Sass is one of the best. I mean, one of the most populated um, CFL teams when it comes to fans cheering your team and supporting your team. SAS is the best. They are the uh, they are the Green Bay Packers of the CFL. The fans are going to – because it ain't much to do out there, but the fans are coming to the game every week. They support the team. like They, they know you. Like, if you're in Edmonton – I mean, I'm in SAS, the fans know who you are. They, they will rent out their houses to you for free. So they can, because they support the players, they love the, you in that town, and they're gonna do anything to keep you there and make you have a good time. So he gets, you know, he goes there, and it's a good time. They they flip things around. So he did it twice. He did it in Edmonton. He did it in Sass. 
he just couldn't do it in Edmonton, man. He he, he just was a turnstile out there. They get players in and out every week. And 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 then last year when they finally turned things around with Trey Ford because he minimizes their defense of being out there on the field as a quarterback because he was like Vic like because no D lineman could catch this guy, and he extend plays even though he can't read defense as well. His footwork and uh, his speed as a quarterback, and he's so small, he extend plays and he made deep throws to his receiver, not because he's reading the game, but because he can extend plays and you counter play them in man, or you have to blitz him, or he's just gonna tear you apart because nobody could catch him. So, and that that made their run game so damn versatile and great, and they had other offenses off the field the whole game and then they were scoring points so that made his defense look better than it was so he's eight and 33 this last yeah, year really he's eight and, and 33 and, and they, they only won two home games since he's been there oh that's okay you don't win home <laughs> games how so he's, he's games? six and, you have, you have to win six, home games. he's two okay, i don't even know what it is yes he's, only won, he's, won, six, he's won six on the road yes okay um so Tell us about your experiences with him. Man, so so just like what I was telling you all about how you get players in and out. So he comes in, and he becomes the coach of Saz after, you know, Saz has a bad year, and Saz just brought me in the last couple of weeks of the season. So the next off, next year, I'm I'm thinking I'm coming back to Saz. They hire a new coach because they finished 3-15 and the year before. But I'm thinking I'm coming into this team because he comes in as the head coach immediately, and he releases 20 players, all of old vets and – and, and whoever he thinks he's not good, who don't have a chance because they're not 6'3 or 6'4 or fits his, you know, prototypical athlete build, he releases you or, he, you know, especially as a DB, you have to be 6'2, 6'3, run a 4'5. I don't care if you can cover or not, no matter how garbage you are for what I want you to do on defense to jam and run. I think I can make you into a better player than you are, even though he's not a good developer. So he comes in, he releases 20 players immediately. So I say, okay, cool. Nick Taylor doesn't get released. I'm good. Obviously, they're bringing me back. They do another – they release another 20, 18 players off the roster. Now, mind you, it's only like 60, 70, 80 players on the roster. Again, he does it again. I survived the cut. So it's getting closer to camp. And then my agent called me or the GM calls me and said, hey, you know, we're releasing Nick, yada, yada, yada. So this is getting closer to camp. We released like three players, and I'll be, I was one of them. I'm like, damn, you didn't even give me a chance. Like, And if you were going to release me, release me early on in free agency and give me a chance to go sign with another team and have my my pick of teams or where to go to. Even though this is my first time just getting into the CFL, you know, but people are giving me a chance because Nick runs a fucking 4-2. <laughs> Nick is fast as hell no matter what his experience say. I just came from arena football, so I understand CFL game dealing with the waggle in arena football. I have a great year. I come over there. And he just doesn't give me a chance. And I find out it's because it's just not the type of player that he wants on his team as a DB or, you know, what he thinks a football player should be. So it really doesn't give me a chance, which actually I'm not mad later on because it turned out to be the best decision that happened. They go on and suck their first year. I go to Ottawa. I play big time minutes with them. I play a lot of games my rookie year. And I win a motherfucking great cup my rookie year, baby. I get an extra double digit figures in uh in great cup money for winning the championship. So I'm okay, baby. But mm -hmm. I just didn't like how he go about it. But going on and seeing years after years, that's just who he is, and that's how he runs his team. And how do you build a team like that? And that's what happened continuously with Edmonton. Is like you're not building no continuity, so you're not gonna win. So he. Bench is Trey Ford this year, the guy who actually won four or five of his wins. <laughs> After you kept him on the bench the whole first nine games because he's not ready. And when the media talks to him, he's not good enough. But the starting quarterback, Taylor Cornelius, is about as good as I shoot three-pointers in college basketball. Go look up the stats. I shot 14% in college basketball. So that's how bad Taylor Cornelius is. And he keeps start running him out there every week as the starting quarterback. And, and they can't score. And he's the reason they're losing by 20, 30 points early in the year. And he's just the starting. Like, why not putting in Trey Ford, this young, energetic, you know, player? He's just not doing good in practice. Some, You know what, Coach? Some motherfuckers are just gamers. And Trey Ford is a gamer. And he got you most of your wins, and then you go out there and get another quarterback this year and don't give him a chance to be a starter? That's just foolish, man. And you thought you had it all planned out, and you don't. And they lose 
all five of their games this season. And they did it stupidly because you know what? They're second in the league in penalties. He never has his team under control. They they have 8.6 penalties a game. You give up 30 points a game this year on defense, you deserve to be fired. And let's see what the new coach can do who's been under him for a long time, Jarius Jackson, the offensive coordinator. He becomes the head coach, the interim coach. Um, G. Roy Simon, one of the lead leaders in receiving yards in CFL history. I think he's second now. He becomes the GM, he's interim GM. And let's see how they turn it around this week against Ottawa in a rubber match. Um, but that game right there, they find a way to lose. Any way they can lose, they find a way to lose. Rudy, they come back, they tie the game up. What they do, Rudy? Eight yeah, seconds left in the game. Eight seconds left in the game. What do they do? You said you watched the end of that game. I didn't watch anything. I, I, no, I didn't see that. The kicks the ball out of fucking bounds. Oh, okay. They start the – so Ottawa starts at the 50. Their kicker only needs about another 15 yards to be at like a 52-yard field goal range. Drew Brown throws a dot to – I think the, the receiver name is Templeton, who had a monster game for like 150. Uh, I think he's a rookie. He throws a dot across the across the field. It's a skinny post or a post or a big-ass dig bin. And he catches for catches and run and gets down before the clock runs out. So they gets a, a 39, 36 yard field goal for the win by Lewis Ward. That's easy money, baby. But they find a way to lose the game. Last week against BC, they get a, a face mask penalty at the end of the game and prolong the drive for for uh, Vernon Adams and they go and lose a field goal there against Toronto. They 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 tie the game up again. They get a chance to, to score. They don't. They punt the ball. No. Uh, Toronto punts the ball. They get a fucking rough in the kicker. So Toronto gets the drive continue, but they, they they didn't get nothing. They didn't get a field goal on that drive, but they punt it. And now they 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 um catch the punt at like the one yard line, get four yards, and now they have a long field to go. They get a two and out. Toronto gets the ball, drive the ball another 10, 15 yards, and kick the field goal. So field position fucked them up that game just because they get the penalty and do foolish shit. And that's so they, suck. They, they suck, and you don't like him. <clears throat> that, that's, that's the story of Nick and Chris Jones. I, Nick, I Nick, know what. Nick, Nick doesn't like Chris Jones. It's okay. He can admit it. He can sugarcoat it. He didn't like the way he was treated, and I understand that. And Chris Jones has been a certifiable loser since then. So the proof is in the pudding. Hey, they should. Eight, but they eight, know, eight, eight and thirty. Eight and thirty-three is eight and thirty-three. And you don't win at home. That's if you don't win at home, and you're two and seventeen at home. You suck. You deserve and he to should be have a job. He should have been fired. I mean, I don't know enough about this team, but he should have been fired at the end of last season. There's no way in the world someone who's eight and twenty-eight should Rudy, have they, a job for a thirty. They, I don't care they, what you paid him. They finished the season strong. I don't care what you've paid him. He's so you saw, eight and twenty-eight. You fire that man. You fire that man. But they you finished the season man. strong, Rudy. I, I'll give you that. So, what does that matter? Because you start what, the season. What does that matter? Why does that change? matter? You starting mm-hmm. to see the change into next year, but his defense is just. And then he switched quarterbacks. A turn, a turn stop. But they get a quarterback who they think is going to be better, who's, who's a more pro style quarterback. Why would you do that when the guy that you had that turn the season just now you now you take get written like why exactly. would you do that? And then you bench that quarterback and you sit him there and tell him, oh, we want to develop him more after he that's made crap. you look better than you were as a fucking coach last year. That's all. I, that just don't make any sense to me. Um, and the Cloud Bethel is a good quarterback. He just. They just haven't won. He hasn't made the, the throws when they needed to. He has done sometimes for the most part. But as a whole, as a team, they just find a way to lose. So, you know what Stephen A. say? Whatever could go wrong, they're like the Cowboys. Will go wrong. But there, it's worse. No, oh, the Cowboys win 12 games this yes, season. Yes, exactly. So, I don't want to – not even remotely worse. close. Worse. <laughs> Anyhow, there you have it. Uh, that's uh, Nick's uh, feelings on Chris Jones. Um yeah, zero and five. Yeah, you should be fired. End of story. Yeah, every so, let, so three receivers that game had over a hundred yards. You get a hundred yards. You get a hundred yards. You get a hundred yards. It was fucking Oprah Winfrey out there. So okay. yeah, you gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go expeditiously, real fast. We gotta get you out of here. So let's jump into uh, the picks. The the picks of the week. The picks of the week. Last, what, what we can do, old Canada. Who no, is no, your player? Power rankers. That's good. We can do a picks let's of the go, week. Okay, let's go. Which one would you like to do? Picks Which of the week. Let's... Picks of the week. Because right. now Nick is two and two again, so that makes him four and four on the season. Um, I'm correct? better than I'm better than Chris Jones. 
Yeah, you might be. I mean, <laughs> hey. He's he's over five. I got so some wins out here. So, so you get to pick uh, Edmonton and Ottawa. Ottawa's a two and a half point favorite. Who blew it for me last week? Oh, Edmonton. I don't my, know. You tell me. You picked Edmonton, Chris Jones, boys. Edmonton blew my because I, I I I thought I gave Edmonton a chance, even though I knew better that mm. they'll find a way to lose. You know, but you know what? Guess what I'm gonna do again? You know the definition of insanity? Doing the oh, same you're, thing. You're, over. you're gonna pick them because they have a new coach. I know. Yeah, yeah I am gonna pick them. All right. Um, so this week, man, we're gonna start off on a short week. Edmonton and Ottawa rubber match. They play not the rubber match. They play a rematch this week, back to back weeks. Um, so they're giving um Edmonton two point five. I'm taking that. Um, and I'm going and I'm actually doing another thing with them. I'm going for this game the over fifty two point five, taking the over because both of these teams can't stop. All right, you just made okay. So you're going over. You're taking Edmonton with the points and the wins. Yes. Yes. You, you create your mouth, and now I got to do a third column. Oh, I'm just right. saying that I'm giving, I'm giving, right. the, I'm okay. giving people. I'm doing what I'm gonna do, but I'm. Okay. Hey, if you want to choose to follow me, go ahead. All this right. is what Edmonton, I'm thinking. So this is that both Dick these teams Edmonton. give up thirty points a game. They're, All right. They're, so Edmonton has them. To, he has Edmonton to win, to cover, and the over. All right. Yep. 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 Winnipeg uh-huh. at Saskatchewan. Winnipeg is a two and a half point favorite. They seem to be turning it around. Yeah, um, so this game, I'm going Winnipeg with a 2.5. This game in, um, in SAS is always a tough game for Winnipeg every year. Even the one year they probably won out of the last couple years, two years. Um, I was a part of that game, and we should have damn right lost to mm-hmm. Cody, Cody Fajardo, and SAS wasn't good that year. And they Cody throws an interception at the end of the game. When they had us dead to right, and they end up, we end up winning that game. So Winnipeg always goes there and find it a tough game, no matter what the record is. But Sass is doing good this year. They got a one loss, but um, I don't think Shea Patterson gets it done against Winnipeg. I think um, defensive coordinator JY finds a way to confuse him and get some um, big plays on him. And they lose a big weapon on their offensive line, Yoshi Hardwick, one of the, the best O line in the league last year, or the second best offensive lineman in the league last year. Um, to a big injury, heart and soul of the O line, the probably the offense, and that was a big rematch game for him against his old team. So I think Winnipeg goes out there and they continue their streak and they get to three and four. So Winnipeg with the points and the win under fifty one in that game. Under, and then we got Toronto at Hamilton. Toronto is a three and a half point favorite. Um, Hamilton's bad. I, I, I think you're picking Toronto on both of those without even thinking. Yeah, about Hamilton's it. bad. Um. They don't score. I mean, they don't play defense. I think Toronto run game gets it going against um, Hamilton. And then Hamilton do what they do. They come back at the end of the game, and they score some points. So I like the over for that game on a Saturday, 52.5. And then finally, the game of – I don't know if you call this the game of the week. I don't think any of these games really are all that exciting. Uh, Win- Winnipeg, mean, and maybe, maybe Winnipeg so, and Saskatchewan so is – Winnipeg uh, and Sass is always an exciting game, no matter the record. The fans – um, from these two provinces, they hate each other. Damn, um, they they hate it. Um, they hate each other. It's just this is a rivalry, Rudy. This is like a college atmosphere. This is the Ohio State versus Michigan atmosphere. This is what that is in CFL. So you mm-hmm. tune in in this game, you're gonna see a loud crowd. It's raucous. It's, it's raucous. And then later on in the year, when 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 Sass goes to Winnipeg and they do their banjo bowl, it gets back crazy on that side. It's a whole college, mm-hmm. one of the most outstanding atmospheres that you will ever see in college in in, in um CFL. Okay, so, so that's the game of the week, no matter what, Rudy. That's so just the, the rivalry. The, the final one is BC at Calgary. BC is a four and a half point favorite. Um, I think BC is riding the high horse, but I think they um they get the win, but um Calgary covers, and that game goes over fifty two point five. Okay. So there you have it, everyone. Nick has Edmonton to win and cover and the over. Winnipeg to win and cover and the under. Under, right? Yeah, uh, yeah that one's under. The under. Toronto to win and cover and the over. And BC to win, Calgary to cover and the over. Let's jump into the power rankings of the week. We're keeping it short this week, right? I, I, already, I already know who number nine is. It's Hamilton. 
Um, in the I don't give a damn about these couple teams. We're just gonna start at seven. <laughs> so Hamilton's nine and Edmonton is eight. We're just gonna start at seven. They could be whichever way you want to put them. You could flip flop them, tip top them, skip dip, rip them, flip them. I don't give a dang. They're they're nine and eight. Irrelevant. They're at the bottom. Even though I think Edmonton gets to win this week. Uh, I'm gonna guess your. I'm gonna guess your top your 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 power rankings. Okay, go ahead. I think you got Montreal sitting at number one. Okay. I think you have BC at number two. I think you've got. Uh, Toronto at three, Saskatchewan four, Winnipeg five, Calgary six, and Ottawa seven. Could be wrong. I think I'm flipping Ottawa with somebody. Yeah, yeah, you're wrong. You're okay. Wrong. Yeah. It, um, you did a good – that was a good try. I'm but, not looking um, at records, by the way. I'm just guessing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did a good try. So, like we're saying, we're skipping all the way to seven. Um, Winnipeg – I mean, Calgary lose their last two games – even though they're, you know, they lose them at the end of the game, and they're in both of the games. I like the way they're looking this year. Jake Myers, a couple turnovers that I don't like that he had these past couple of weeks and how you played. But for the most part, he threw darts in, against Winnipeg. He made some great plays, but those interceptions, we have to get those under control. Don't mm-hmm. go down that rabbit hole again. Doing late throws to the out. You don't throw it out late. You don't scramble and throw it <laughs> out late. You don't do that. That's just never a good idea. Um, so Calgary is two and three. They lost the past couple games. They're at seven. At number six, um, Ottawa gets a big win against Edmonton. They're three and two. I keep them at six. Um, Winnipeg jumps in front of Ottawa this week after their win against Calgary, and they beat Ottawa the week before. So they go to five at two and four. At number four, with the big time special teams is Denary and Grant. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm hmm. <laughs> What's your problem? Angel Reese just took a jump shot. Rudy, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Rudy. I'm sorry. Rudy, I'm, we'll talk about that later. We're not Angel Reese time. All right. Winnipeg at number five, two and four. They get their quarterback back, Zach Caleros. He's finally throws a couple of touchdowns. They find a new hot receiver in Ontario, Pokey Wilson. And they, they're, 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 they're starting to turn it around right now. So they're at five. Toronto at Four to three and two, they get a big win against Montreal last week. The key to their, um, the recipe to their success is field position on special teams, big plays on defense, make turnovers and score, um, because they're good at scoring otherwise than offense. Thirteen t- offense touchdowns, three touchdowns otherwise. Um, so therefore, at three, SAS at three until they get their quarterback Trevor Harris back. Um, they're four and one. They sit at three right now. Um, they they're solid. They're they're a real good team. Um, they just need to get their starting quarterback back. Even though Shea Patterson has been playing well as a backup for sure, for sure. I'm not mad at him at all. At number two, um, I'm dropping the reigning champions to two, man. Even though they lost the game, their starting quarterback was out. I don't know how long he's going to be out. He gets a bye week to recover. He's been playing amazing, but. They did end up losing that game um, against Toronto. So, number one is the hottest team in the league on a five-game winning streak. Vernon Adams was throwing 400 yards per game. Man, this guy's on wreck. He's on the pace to throw for over 6,000 yards this year, a whole bunch of touchdowns. He has two receivers that are absolutely just giving teams all the business they can handle. And guess what, Rudy? His best receiver from last year isn't even back yet. He tore his Achilles in the in the West Finals, but he's practicing. So when they get him back, ooh, look out for this offense. The greatest show on turf since the St. Louis Rams. So we have number one, BC, two, Montreal, three, Saskatchewan, four, Toronto, five, Winnipeg, six, Ottawa, seven, Calgary, eight, Edmonton, and nine, Hamilton. Yes, sir. So let's jump into it. Your O Canada, O Canada, O Canada. Let's see. Let Our me... home and native land. Yeah. True patriot love. Okay. In all thy sons command. Okay. 
With growing okay. hearts, we see thee rise, the true north, strong and free. Ooh, that's the Winnipeg, the Winnipeg fan say, Oh, Canada, we stand on we guard, guard for thee. God, God keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, oh, Canada, we, we stand, stand on guard for thee. I'm not reading that, people, and I'm not Canadian. I think I'm pretty good. And and, and what Rudy got the vibe going, it just flowed. I felt like I was back out there. <laughs> um, I always stood at, like, the five-yard line away the from everybody else. The dopest thing I've seen was when I watched Edmonton play the Panthers, and they have a singer who's singing the U.S. National Anthem, and bald white dude, obviously, I think almost everyone's white, but a bald white dude. <laughs> and then he's singing the U.S. National Anthem. And then he starts the Canadian National Anthem, sings about two lines. And then, go and then the whole place oh, starts singing. Sings in. And he doesn't even need to. I think he just drops his microphone and he sings along. But everyone is singing. That never happens in the U.S. They start. Was, they, it's dope as hell. We do, we do in the U.S. We you're we'll lucky to see it. you're lu- you're lucky to see athletes even have their hand on their heart, even mouthing the words. Half of them don't know the words. We we, it's we an we, absolute embarrassment. We helped out Fergie at the All Star game. Get the fuck out of here! That's the one thing that just disgusts me so much about this country that I live in is that people think it's really cool to disrespect our national anthem. That's a conversation I, for I, another I day. We're going into that, Rudy. We're not going to dive into that. You know, um, but but you, right. would never, you would never see that in Canada. Or no, well, you know. Hey, mm-hmm. all right, we'll we'll go into another topic. So, all who right. are your old Canada players of the week? All right, there are so many players that I could have chose on offense. Janarian Grant, his big week as a with the kick return and giving them amazing field position all week. Um, Ontario Pokey Wilson, thirteen catches, two hundred and one yards. Is that him? Is that the one you're picking? No, I'm telling you who could have been oh. the nominees. Oh, right. Vernon Adams, he gets 451 yards but and a rushing touchdown, but he threw two interceptions. That could have cost him the game. So we're going to X him out this week, even though he's been amazing. You X the guy that threw for 451 yards. So this week, there's going to be co-offensive player of the week. God, Justin McKinnon's oh, unstoppable, unreal. He's become – the best receiver in the league. I mean, Kenny Lawler might have something to say about that when he comes back from his injury. But right now, this guy's unstoppable. Can't do anything with him. Big ass receiver. I think he got all his confidence when he caught a touchdown on me in the preseason last year because he's been around the league in SAS and he was just a, a guy. And and now last year, I think playing with with Dominique Rhymes and 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 um. And damn, what's my guy name? Um, I just talked about him as Hatcher, and they gave and and and, and Lucky and Lucky gave this guy tremendous confidence to come into this year or last year and ball out. He continued continued it this year. So Justin McKinnis, co offense, O Canada, O Canada player of the week for the offense. And I have to go with my guy, Drew Brown, man. 26 for 38, 480 yards, and he gets a coach fired? Come on. That has to be that has to be a guy. And that has to be a guy who gets recognition. Two touchdowns, a 12.6 average per throw. Um, Drew Brown and Justin McKinnis, I had to give it co-offensive player, O Canada, O Canada player of the week. Um, oh, they, I, have to, I have to do these graphics, so Nick just added more work for me. Thank yeah, you. they did both of these players standing on guard for D. Um, so we got to give them respect for that. And then on defense, it could have been a couple players. Justin, I mean, Jovan Santo Knox, I played with that guy. He had two sacks. Roland Milligan, another week with another interception. He's all over the place. He has a pass breakup. Um, my guy, Trey Roberson with Calgary, gets two interceptions against Winnipeg. Um, one start the game off. He jumps up uh, uh, on the cover zero. He comes, jumps a slant. And another one, he reads the uh, he reads the um, sit down, sit down corner route. He comes off his guy, he catches the corner route in the end zone. Um, but I'm gonna go with the t- guy who helped his team win the game, Dietrich Nichols. Dietrich Spook Nichols, 
Um, he has a pick six. He has a forced fumble. Um, he's all over the receiver as he catches the ball. He's around every play. He's just um one of the heart and soul players of uh Winnipeg defenses. Man, it was a it's a pleasure to play with that guy. He's damn hilarious. He's funny. He's on the field. He's about his business, man. And he's one of the top DBs in the league, if not the top DB in the league. And he's been doing his thing, and he changed the game last game for them. So he is my O Canada, O Canada player of the week for the defensive side, baby. Those are the three players who got the recognition this week, man. Um, maybe Coach O'Shea for Winnipeg um, gets, you know, almost got a recognition because he made a tackle as a coach on the sideline, man. And he's the all-time leader tackler in the CFL, man. So shout out to him. <laughs> Um, but he doesn't get the award this year. It goes to his defensive back, Nietzsche Nichols. So there it is, folks, the O Canada, O Canada Players of the Week, uh, Justin McKinnis uh, from BC, Drew Brown from Ottawa, and on the defensive side, Dietrich Nichols. Where does, who does he play for? Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Oh, you're homering again. Okay. That's why I got my <laughs> Winnipeg jacket on. But and I'm folks, not biased. This, this is not a Winnipeg shirt. This I am not biased, wearing. people. I am <laughs> objective. And I come with perspective. So <laughs> I am projective when I come to. What the hell? Did you just made up a word. I am projective, projective. Projective when it comes to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the CFL <laughs> League because you are not going to destroy my integrity when it comes to this sport. All right, folks. So there you have it. Um, we had our power rankings. We had our players of the week. We have our picks. Any final word, Nick, before we jump off here? Keep it um, brief. CFL is a fun game, baby. Um, like I told you, what made the game special is special teams. It matters. You cannot hide. You cannot kick the ball out of bounds. You cannot fair catch. You have different opportunities. Mitch field goals are big opportunities for the for the defense to flip the game around and get big points when these big old linemen who look like Rudy are running around on the field. You can run past him, and you can make a big play, and that's what makes this game great guys keep watching enjoy it my people down south of the border tune in to cbs sports they have games on all the time tune into your cfl app cfl.ca you can watch the game on your phone and watch the and, and watch it online and you can see everything and what make this game fun and dynamic and continue to support the league baby you never know you might see me on a highlight tape one day all um, right, folks. Marcus. There you have it. Um, that is our. This is our third uh, come on CFL episode, partnering with Bet Ninety Nine. Please remember to use our code Come On Nine Nine, all capital letters, when you sign up. You have up to a fifteen hundred dollar matching bonus for first bet. And um, yeah, the clicks, the links are in the bio. So please be sure to support that because you are supporting this channel. But Please bet responsibly. That's One more all we thing. Have. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Edmonton Elks. Y'all should not have to go through what y'all have been going through the past few years. Y'all went 1,400 days without a home win. Yeah, yeah. because uh, they yeah. they won their last game in like 2019 with Coach Moss as the coach, and yeah. then they then we had COVID. So we had to count those days. And then the next year, they didn't win a game with their new head coach that came in after Moss, after they fired him. And then they had Jones, and they didn't win again until last year after he lost all his home games his first year as a coach. Um, this is one of the most proud franchises in, in, in the NCFL. They won five championships in a row with Warren Moon. They have a lot of championships, a lot of banners. Um one of the most all-time winningest teams in the league, and it they seems like deserve this. So seems like most women. It seems like most winning in Edmonton came in the eighties. I mean, but they between, last, between the CFL the and the NHL, fifteen. You know, so it wasn't all bad. I said, mo was, I said most. Okay, but the, they this 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 stadium filled like seventy k, man, sixty k. Okay, and now they could barely get 10, 15 k in there because these fans are disappointed. They start supporting like they should, especially if you don't win like that. They're like, damn. Well, you party. saw how they support when they win because they were outside partying on road games, sitting outside of the – And the that's the same area. Hockey, the, hockey arena. So The same you know. area. The, the, the football stadium is 10 minutes away from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm just sorry for that, man. It was a great episode today, man. 
Y'all continue to support us. I'm going to keep bringing content, the little ins and out, nooks and cranny, and we're going to keep having fun with this, baby. And, and, and CFL football players, subscribe yeah. to our channel. We're talking about you. Yeah. In the U.S., no one talks about this except for us. This is obviously being pushed to Canada as well through our partnering at Bet99. So please check us out. S subscribe to our page. I have some great guests coming on in the we, next couple of weeks. Y'all, we, know, so, so all y'all, this is about y'all too, man. So subscribe to our page. Push it up there. We're, we've over, we're over 2,100 subscribers now. We're I think at 2,143 when I last checked about an hour ago. Um, I'd like to talk about more than just Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. So please do subscribe and, and jump on and push this out there to your peoples, man. Thank you, everybody, again. Come on, CFL.